All right, so let's talk about JoJo's new album. Good to know. Y'all ready? It's lit. I came to vibe. You came to function. Just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, no, no. no. I came to vibe. You came to function. Just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, no, no. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Bright here, the RB Kid. I'm back again for the review for y'all. Like I said on today's video, I'm gonna be doing a review for JoJo's new album, Good to Know. Yo, for any of y'all who don't know, I'm a JoJo stan to the day I die. Um, quietly, JoJo is lo like low key one of my favorite artists in the music industry, one of my favorite vocalists of my generation. Um, I have been a fan of her since 2004, and she holds a special place in my heart because she's one of those artists I think of. When I think of artists who um, were really a part of like me growing up into, me just me growing up in general, also just growing up into loving music uh, from like my teen years into me come, becoming a man. Like JoJo was one of those artists that like, I just instantly like instantly takes back to my childhood when I think of like the good music of like the, you know, the early to mid 2000s. Like JoJo is um, one of those artists that just, that just takes me back to that time period. Um, Cause she was killing it back then and even though she's had a long journey ever since then that most of us know about um her music has still uh, been very consistent she's been grinding forever to you know just just to make sure she can um you know keep her career afloat and she her her story is really one that um is really inspirational and, I, and I've, I've loved her ever since um she first came out just because of her music and because of what she's had to go through and how she's overcome all of it while finding avenues and ways to put out good music consistently even if it's not been out there like you know to and you know in the gp's face she's been making good music for years on the low um so i will always love jojo to the day i die and i'll be honest a part of me did not want to make this video uh i was i was tweeting one of my friends shout out to tony if you're watching this video um i was tweeting one of my friends uh that i low-key like didn't want to make this video <laughs> because i was really disappointed by the rollout of this album the album itself is great. We'll get into all, but I just wanted to summarize. I really didn't want to make this video because as a stand of JoJo, I didn't want to go up on a camera and be like, ah, well, you know, this wasn't working out in terms of the how the album was rolled out. But I'm gonna be, I'm just gonna be honest, bro. Um, I think this album is great, but I was, I just didn't want to get up on the camera and be like, I'm really disappointed about how the album was rolled out. But I am. So we'll talk about it. We'll get into it. But overall, um, this is JoJo's fourth album. Uh, she released it on May 1st. Oh, sorry. The, the song. It, went down for a second y'all can still sing right all right cool so this is jojo's fourth album it came out on may 1st 2020 this past friday um on her new uh, independent imprint called clover music uh which is a label she just created a few years ago um, after she left atlantic records which is where she released her last album um mad love which is an amazing project that i'll talk about in a little bit later but such a good project that I met a lot of y'all slept on, but um, so yeah, this is her her first album ever since Mad Love, which came out in the fall of 2016. So it's been about three plus years since, since we got a project from JoJo. So it's been a long wait, but she's finally here with her fourth uh, album. Uh, she released on Clover along with uh, Warner Music. And um, if you know, for producers, she's got a tight team of producers. We got Doc McKinney, who worked a lot with The Weeknd, uh, Doc McKinney on some tracks, Lido, who works a lot with, you know, Halsey and Chance the Rapper. Um, a plus uh, and noise club were part of Mike uh, Michael made its camp I think um, and 30 rock on a track as well so yeah very tight team producers that created about nine tracks um, I do always mention that there actually is an intro and outro for the album that is not really on the version that everyone's really seeing I think it's on the physical edition um, I actually did hear both of those tracks and they're actually both great so I'm kind of mad she couldn't have found a way to put those that intro and outro on the digital ed edition of the album um, because I feel like they're both good tracks that a lot of people should hear, but it is what it is. Now we're here with her new album, um, where she's really leaning into more of like, uh, you know, introspective R&B vibe, uh, which is, she's already been used to this vibe. Like she's, she's already been on this vibe for years, but, um, I feel like this is the first album we're getting from Jojo where it's really like all together as a body of work, like a really like, you know, really dope, like late night introspective vibey R&B uh, project that really is just heart you know talking about her mental state you know things she's learned things she's going through in a really cool way so let's get into it man i'm gonna do a quick track by trying to break i'm gonna do a quick track by track breakdown of all the tracks and i'll give you my overall thoughts at the end so y'all ready let's get into it 
All right, so, so first up, we got the track So Bad. This is a really cool, sexy intro track for the album where she's really getting her shit off. And she's talking to the dude in her life. And she's like, listen, you got your girl. You got your thing going on. But you want me so bad, so what's up? Like, you want it so bad, but you you act like you don't. But you don't, you know you want it so bad. So it's a really cool track where she's getting her shit off. Um, I really love the beat on this track, especially on the hook. I love the beat on the hook. It's really, it really knocks. Um, and I love the throwback feel of the of the way she like arranged the hook where she's like da na da na da 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 na da na da na da na da da you know it feels like a throwback R&B record and I love it um and while I love the way she sung the verses too but she was she's like I'm back boy look at me now I love those parts like but even though I love that I feel like there was something about the like the production and the verses that didn't like really lock me in like that I feel like the production on, on the verses was kind of boring but besides that, this track was cool. It really knocked. I love the, the, the way she sung it, and the beat was a vibe. And I also love the ending of the song, too. So overall, really cool track. All right, next up, we got the track Pedialyte, which is definitely one of my instant favorite tracks off the album. I love this track. It's a track which is talking about, you know, drinking so much one night and just forgetting it the night, the morning afterwards, and all the bullshit that comes with that. Um, I've never actually really used Pedialyte to get over a hangover, but I know that's, that's a lot of people's cures. So shout out to Pedialyte. Uh, yeah, so this is a, a really creative track. I love this track. Definitely was an instant highlight. I love the melody on the song. It's such an earworm of a melody. And I also love the sound of the chimes on the, on the production too. Really creative sound with those chimes. It really was dope. And um, I love the flow on the verses as well. I love the way she flowed on the verses. It was so vibey. And those backgrounds at the end, um, before that outro part, like those background vocals at the end, before the outro was so dope and then um the vocal arrangement with that hard ass beat uh for the outro part that was fly as hell too so all around a really great track that was definitely a highlight i love what it's talking about it's, it's relatable as hell um it sounds so good it's a vibe really good track all around all right y'all next up was the track gold uh so this wasn't my favorite track off the album uh, definitely not a bad track at all this wasn't my favorite it, it didn't like instantly capture me um to me there's something a little bit run the middle of this track just a little bit uh but it's sexy as hell it's romantic it's really beautiful track that just is smooth really sexy feels good and it rides uh, and it's a really romantic track that's really you know written be really really beautifully um simple track but it's written really beautifully um and it just feels like a really nice throwback r&b record that's just sexy simple um and effective it might it might be a little bit run of the mill it might blend into um it might blend in a little bit too much but it really is a nice little track so it was cool shout out to gold all right, next up on the album is the track Man. Um, Man is a good track. I don't feel like this should have been the first single for the album. Uh, but even though I don't feel like it should have been the first single, the lead single, I still think it's a great track that just gets better with more listens. I remember when I first heard Man, I was like, uh, it's cool. But it's, it's one of those tracks that just gets better the more and more you hear it. It gets better with more listens. Um, and it's a great statement record as well. Like, she's making a really great statement on this record um, about, like, you know, she's at this point in her life as a woman, she's like, listen, I'm going to need a man that's going to love me like a fan, love me like a stan, you know? Uh, so I really liked how she really used this track to really like you know give us a like a capsule into like where she's at in her life right now how she feels what she wants out of her life and like i said it's a great statement record where she's really in her bag getting her shit off um and yeah so even though this track i don't think it should have been like the lead single for the album i still think it's a great track that is definitely one more uh empowering parts of the album and it's a great centerpiece for the album so it's a cool track so next up we got the track small things um man this is definitely a really interesting track i love the acoustic vibe on it i really feel like jojo's a chameleon in the sense that she can like really she can really work well on a produced track that has like a lot going on on it she can really work well on like a like a mid-tempo sparse track that just has a little bit of production on it and she can really work well on a really stripped down acoustic track where she's really letting her voice and beautiful lyrics shine through and which she did on this track i really think this track has some beautiful and relatable lyrics that i think really speak more to what's going on right now in our society more so than ever um and this track she's really talking about you know and being at a point in her life where she's really appreciating the small things and really just being thankful and grateful for the small things that really give her sustenance in her life uh, and really giving recognition to those small things because a lot of times we, we, we really do let ourselves get away from thinking about and being appreciative of the small things that really keep us going uh because we're so focused on all these big things that really don't matter you know so this track was a really dope track that really highlighted all that in a really dope way i love the way she wrote it um yeah i loved also love the high note at the end of the bridge as well that high note at the end of the bridge i was like yes Jojo, give it to us <laughs> Um, but I'm not I'm not gonna front. I'm gonna admit when I first heard the song, I thought it was a little bit boring. I, I don't know why I just thought it was a little bit boring. Uh, but on more listens, I was like, oh my god, this track is really beautiful. 
I love the way she set it up and the word sang. Such a good message, and I feel like it was a great track for this album. Um, really, really introspective, beautifully written track that is so important right now with what's going on. Um, so yeah, great track. Definitely a highlight of the album. Small Things is beautiful. Shout out to that track. Next up, we got the track Lonely Hearts. Um, definitely was instant highlight for me off the album. I love this track. One of my favorite tracks off the album. I definitely feel like this should have been the first single off the album for sure. I feel like it would have been a much better choice than Man. Um, but uh, yeah, this track is a really cool track where she's pretty much talking about like wanting to be alone because lonely hearts won't break. And I love the creativity behind the track and I love the, you know, timeless, relatable message that's real as hell. Uh, she's like, listen, like if I'm working on, if I'm working on your body, how can I work on me? And that's a really dope concept. Like I like that this track is really talking about uh, when someone's really wanting to be with somebody, but you know that that's not always the best thing to do because you, it's not giving you the time to really focus on yourself and what you want for yourself. Um, and also when you're not with somebody, you're not giving yourself the chance to be heartbroken and to be and to be played with. So that's also something that people think about all the time too. Like, yeah, I want to be with this person, but I know there's a chance that if I start fucking with them, they're going to play me, they're going to break my heart. So maybe let me just be, be with myself so I want to deal with that. And that's something that a lot of people can relate to. So really good message, really good lyrics, really well thought out, well arranged, um, well put together song. I love I love the slinky sexy R&B beat on it. I think this was produced by Doc McKinney, so shout out to him. I love the sexy R&B beat on it. It's such a groovy, vibey feel. Um, and I love the, like, the dope and classic feel uh, of that hook. Like, you know, how can I work on me if I'm working on your body? Like, it's, that feels timeless. It's such a good hook. I love the love the classic feel of it. Um, yeah, it's, and it's always great to hear like a very vulnerable, but also empowering jam from JoJo. So this is one of those classic songs that is like equally vulnerable, but also empowering powering at the same time so i love this track definitely a highlight for me off the album and a track that i hope y'all really pay attention to because this track is great please support this track it's a great track all right next up we got the track think about you man dun, dun. Dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Oh man, Think About You is my favorite track of this album. Think About You is everything. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard the piano on Think About You, I think off of the video series she's doing on, on her YouTube, where she was like doing like promo for the album, she was like promoting like, you know, how she created the album. When I first heard that piano on Think About You, I was like, I can't wait to hear that track. <laughs> I can't wait to hear that track, it was such a vibe. And lo and behold, it's my favorite track off the album. I just love the chill vibe of that piano on the track. Oh man, and um, like her amazing flow and her vocal arrangements throughout the track was such a vibe. I love this track. And man, can we talk about these lyrics? These lyrics are real and relatable as hell. Everyone goes through this where they're they were with someone where when they broke up with them when they're not with them with them no more like you always think about should i go back to them because you you constantly think about them and then people in your life are like no don't go back to that person you know you you weren't good with them they weren't good for you like you know it was bad it was toxic like move on but you can't help but just think about that person because of the because of the, the connection you have with that person even though things didn't work out so everyone can relate to this uh to what the song's talking about it's so relatable and like I said, just the vibe that this song created with like that chill piano, the 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 harmonies throughout, the, the vocal arrangements, the flow of the way she wrote the track, like I just I just love this track. It was an instant highlight for me, and I love I love the way she put it together. So one of, definitely my favorite track of the album. Um, I don't know if it'll become a single, but um, and I don't even know if it should be a single, but I just love this track. So shout out to all my people that love this track too. That's your favorite track of this album. I'm with y'all. I love this track. Think about you. Yes. <laughs> Alright y'all, so next up we got the track Comeback, which, which uh, featured Tory Lanez and 30 Rock. Um, this is a cool track. This is definitely one of the most sexy tracks on the album, where she's really in her late night R&B sexy bag. Where she's talking, she's talking her shit, she's like, you know, I got that comeback. I'll talk about her good, her good, uh, you know, her good nani. <laughs> so yeah, this is a really cool track, it was a vibe. I think Tory Lanez was cool on it, I like what he did on it. His verse wasn't crazy, but I like what he did on it. Um, and this is, a, yeah, it's just a nice little sexy, like, gutter track, which is really in her bag, just getting to that vibe. Um, and this song will definitely knock in the whip uh, once we can all start driving again. <laughs> but yeah, overall, this is a cool track I was here for. It wasn't my favorite track off the album, but I was definitely here for it. It was a cool track. A nice little way to kind of simmer down, down and kind of end out the album. Uh, so yeah, really cool track. All right, y'all, last track of the album is the track called Don't Talk Me Down. 
Man, when I tell y'all instant highlight of the album, definitely the vocal performance highlight of the album. Man, what JoJo did this track vocally, I mean, I've already heard JoJo's vocals for years. I already know what she can do, but I always just love hearing the track where she really gets into her bag and just, and just soars and just sings to the moon. And she did it on this track. Thank you for Lito uh, for producing this track and really helping her like bring up those amazing vocals that she got. Uh, such a beautifully produced and written track that is, um, that is really talking about uh, that time in, in, in women's life where they feel like they're they're with someone who's constantly like talking down to them instead of like figuring things out with them. And the way Jojo really wrote this track and really like um, like really examined her perspective of this issue was really great. I love the way she wrote it out and the way she sung it, like I said, amazing. Uh, yeah, so really beautifully produced and written track. It's a really well-made song that's just empowering as hell. It's a really empowering, beautiful R&B track um, that just has some really beautiful, great production, classic production on it. Her singing to the Raptors. Man, it was a great way to kind of close out this album in terms of what, what it's talking about. Uh, you know, she's saying, don't talk me down. Like, I'm a woman that's in my bag now. I know what I want, I'm grown. Uh, don't talk me down and let me be me and let me be great. And she ended it off with the vocal performance highlight of the album. Like, it was a great way to kind of close out the album, great. So don't talk me down, man. This is probably, I feel like this will be one of the most special songs in her catalog uh, for years to come. It's gonna be a hidden gem for, for a lot of people. It's gonna be a hidden gem for me. Um, it's probably not a track that I'll like, revisit all the time, but whenever I hear it, I'll be like, oh my God, Jojo, this is why I love you as an artist. This is one of those tracks I'll go to when I think about, if I had to explain to someone why I love Jojo so much, this is one of those tracks I, I put on for them. I'd be like, yeah, listen, listen to this track. This, you'll, you'll get why I think this woman is everything and more. Listen to Don't Talk Me Down. Just, just listen to it. And I'll, I'll, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> all right y'all so that was my track my track breakdown of the album now let me give y'all my general thoughts of the album so first off i just want to say that i love this album cover can we just say that i love this album cover the orange with her like looking off into the distance in some studio with like some like like green light like on her eyes that they perfectly placed i love this album cover it's such a vibe um yeah i love this album cover so i just wanted to say that um and yeah so now let's get into my general thoughts on the album I, like I said before, I thought this album was solid, um, but I will say I'm like I want I want to get into me being a little bit disappointed about how this album kind of came together in terms of the promo and the rollout. So you know, after three years, it's been three plus years. I feel like there should have been way more steam uh, with this album in terms of the promo and the single choices and the overall length of the album. It's only nine songs with the digital edition that most people are getting. And then if for some reason you actually do order the physical edition, it's only two more tracks, which are both an intro and, a, and an outro. Um, that are both great tracks, but most people are not going to hear them because most people are only buying uh, music digitally these days. So, um, with that, this kind of reminds me of Tony Braxton when Tony Braxton put out her Sex and Cigarettes album, which was a great album, but it was only nine, it was only like eight or nine songs. And it's like, damn, Tony Braxton, like you're a whole legend. Like, um, I, I, I actually should be more, I'm not really that informed on how labels come up with the requirements for, for the amount of tracks that can come out on an album. So I'm not really sure if like Warner and her, her label were like, we can't really do more than like nine. I'm not sure like how that works, but if someone does let me know down below, but I'm just really, I feel like for it being, for it having been three years since Jojo put out her last album, especially when Mad Love had like, like Mad Love had like probably like 20 tracks, Mad Love, Mad Love had many tracks. So it, it, it feels like a little bit of a letdown to only get nine tracks after waiting for for uh for, th for three years for an album from jojo um yeah so even though i felt like i was a little bit disappointed by the lack of steam with the promo and the rollout um i, I like for example like man like again i don't think man should have been the first single man is a track that's great but it feels like more of like a great album track than a single for the album i feel like the first single should have been lonely hearts um uh pd light could be a cool single choice as well um yeah, uh, maybe even come back because of the Tory Lanez feature. I don't know, but I just feel like Lonely Hearts, I think, would have been a better launching single for the album. Um, but even with all that in mind, I still think that there's so many gems on this album. And I still think it's, I definitely still think it's a great body of work. And it shows JoJo's growth as a woman and as an artist uh, this far in her life and in her, her career. So I definitely gotta, you know, give a shout out to her for that. Um, this album did show a lot of, you know, artistic, vocal, uh, lyrical growth. Um, but I just feel, I feel a little bit let down because I feel like she couldn't have expounded on it. I feel like she could have expounded on it even more, just having more tracks and having more of an organized rollout. Um, for example, 
uh, at one point it was reported that Small Things would be the first single off the album, then it was reported that Gold would be the, uh, the single off the album, and those never came to happen, and then Man was the first single. So I just feel like behind the scenes, I'm sensing a lot of disorganization within JoJo's team as to like how to promote this album properly, so I'm disappointed by that. Uh, but like I said, with, with the content itself, great, great music. So that's what matters at the end of the day, mostly. So, you know, 10 years from now, no one give a fuck about how this album was rolled out. Uh, they'll care about the music, which is solid. So, you know, I, I'll give her, I'll give her props for that. And I'll, you know, I'll give my, I'll give my girl grace because, you know, um, she kind of started starting from square one with this album. Uh, this is her first album on her own label. So she really is starting from square one after she, after she left Atlantic. Um, but damn, I just feel like I want so much more for her. You know, I feel like Jojo has been going through the ringer for years with her career. So I just like I just want her to win. I want I want so much for her. And I feel like this um I just I'm like damn like I feel like she's not really hitting like she should in terms of like being out there and like you know making the right moves and all that. But like, you know, um I'll give her grace because I know it's not easy to, to start from square one when you're starting your, your own label and figuring all that out. So I, I'll give her grace, you know. Um and uh mad love was such an incredible project with so many bangers from head to toe um that i was so mad that atlantic held to that album terribly i'm so mad that y'all let it flop um because i feel like y'all about to let y'all about to y'all about to do the same thing with this album y'all about to let it flop but um uh you know it's all good this album is, is still great regardless you know and another thing I want to say about the album is that I really do like how this album was sequenced. I feel like it was sequenced very well. Every track felt uh, kind of necessary. And every track felt like it really blended so well into the next. And it, it really felt like this album was like telling a, a little story, you know? Um, every track felt like, every track felt connected. Everything kind of felt like it was really telling this little story of where she's at in her life right now. So that was definitely cool. And um, I definitely didn't expect for her to chase any, you know, basic radio hits on this album. Um, and I really did love the vibey, you know, introspective, um, you know, R&B feel of the project. Uh, but I would have loved like one more, like, like not even one more, because there really wasn't any up tempos. But I would have loved like one up tempo joint to, re uh, to really like, you know, give this album, you know, at least one banger. I would have loved one more ballad, and I would have loved like an experimental, like cool track. Uh, that would have like been like been kind of different different for her, but it still would have been like it still would have fit and it still would have been dope. I would have loved like an experimental track where she tries something different. Um, so that is that's a critique I have. Um, I feel like this, with this album having needed at least like two or three more tracks, I would have had one more being up tempo, one more be like a another ballad, and another be like a really cool experimental track. That's what I would have would have loved for this album. But it's all good. Yeah, so all in all, man, this is a really cool project. It was a really solid project. I appreciate it from JoJo. As someone who's been a fan of JoJo for for years since I've been a kid, I like this album. I'm cool with it. Um, but I, like I said, I'm disappointed by the rollout. But in terms of the album itself, it's solid as hell. It has so many great songs on it with with her powerful vocals. Vocals that have grown, uh, you know, her pen has grown with, you know, with her relatable and really introspective lyrics. Um, this album was a vibe from start to finish, and there was a lot, a lot of really cool, like, you know, really chill soundscapes on this album. So it was, it was a really cool album sonically as well, you know, it was a vibe. Uh, yeah, so I'm wishing the best, yo, for one of my favorite artists and vocalists of my time. I'm wishing the best for her with this album. Uh, please support our, please support her. Please support this girl, JoJo. She's amazing. Uh, because we definitely need more down-to-earth, real-ass, talented people like her do, you know, doing her thing and winning in the industry. So please support JoJo. She's lit. Uh, this album is pretty cool. Um, if I had to give you all my favorite tracks of this album, I'd probably say Pedialyte for sure. Uh, Lonely Hearts. Think about you and don't talk me down. Those, those four are probably my favorite tracks off the album. Oh yeah, another thing I'm realizing, I pretty much all my favorite tracks are all the Lido tracks. So yeah, Jojo, keep working with Lido. You you and him work really well together. Lido produced all my favorite tracks, Pedialyte, uh, Think About You, and Don't Talk Me Down. He produced all my favorite tracks along with Lonely Hearts, but Doc McKay produced that. But Lido, Jojo, keep working with Lido. <laughs> I was kind of deciding between a 3.5 and a 4 for my rating. Um, I want to give this album a 4, but I don't feel comfortable doing that because, like I said, I'm disappointed by the fact that it's only, that it's only nine songs after three years and by um the fact that i feel like we could have gotten more with the way this album was organized and rolled out so just because of that because i feel like it's not enough on this album i'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5 but this is still a really solid project so let me know if y'all have any beef with my rating i think this is a great project but just because i feel like there should have been more tracks i'm gonna give it a 3.5 out of 5 but jojo i love you i love this album and i'm looking forward to you doing more of this album i want to see more single releases more videos um 
and I want you, you and your team to get creative. Even in quarantine, I want y'all to get creative with how to promote this album because it's a solid project that I don't want to go to waste, okay? All right, y'all, so that's my review for JoJo's new album, Good To Know. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed it. Let me know what y'all think about the album now. You know, put down below in the comments uh, what y'all thought about the album. Did y'all think it was amazing? Did y'all think it was whack? Did y'all think it was all right? Uh, let me know what your favorite and your least favorite tracks. Uh, let me know what y'all thought about my review. And let me know if y'all agreed or disagreed, or disagreed with anything I said. Let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Do all that and more, okay? Appreciate y'all. Like I always say, guys, live your best life. Drink more water. Stay woke. And if you're mad or sad, go listen to your favorite song. Make it feel better, okay? Or go listen to one of these songs. Go listen to Think About You. Go listen to talk, Don't Talk Me Down. <laughs> All right, y'all, but this has been your boy, Bright the R&B Kid. Thank you for watching, but for now, I'm signing off, baby. Bye, y'all. Peace. I came to vibe. You came to function. Just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, 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 no. I came to vibe. You came to function. Just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no Relax just a little bit You don't gotta worry, you can just have fun